So there we have it, our first game between these two starting in two seconds here, Mojo. What do you think we're going to see? I'm just going to ask you, do you know what percentage of Knekebrut's success on Himmelsdorf? Zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's see. This is the standard gameplay we have so far. Most of the guys are going up on a hill and some defensive down. Genghis is playing. That's very interesting. We've seen him first time uh, on the last match, I yep. think. Genghis he, in the lineup might make a difference. Yeah, he, he actually performed yeah. pretty well. Now, okay. And Raven is also starter here now. Uh, Raven, I don't see Brati, which isn't. Yeah, Brati misperformed several matches, so I guess he's a bit on a bench to cool off. But a lot of here. sweet guys taking the rail as usual and Knekebrut countering it with really hardcore fast push. We already mentioned if you don't defend uh, that upper cap like uh, with a bunch of tanks and you just leave someone low there, it, it can be a big problem because now you have five guys from Swift completely down out to the fight and if uh, Knekebrut realizes that this match is already over, I mean this game. Yeah, KB now already putting two guys on the cap and Tarantula joining as well. I will push it down. You can see there's still five tanks from Swift in that southern side. Atmospheric here might be forced to go and reset. Three guys are in a cap, actually. This is really nice because Tarantula is on upper part of the cap and you have two 50Bs on the lower part of the cap. Now, why is that interesting? 50Bs are never meant to cap, so they are just there so they can counter push, guys. So as soon as the problem starts, they will just go somewhere and push full speed. Now, Failure is left here down, so he would see someone like uh, Mandrax, who is peeking over to reset the guys above. And whatever happens, the 1390 here is safe. They were expecting it as though Crooks and Xana Leon had their turns turn. Mandax taking a lot on this one as well, but Failware... This is a solid and good play. This is a solid and good play. Keep an eye on that capture circle. Atmospheric is now pushed back. Yes, Failware is a lot of trouble here, but they have to come back for this capture circle. Atmospheric in that E5 is going to have to be the one there. Now they're trying to shield Tarantura in this one, I guess, as Failware is they're there. They're just going to put one guy who was resetted last and he will take the least amount of the points and the other guys will just safely get behind. And who cares? Failure to die, but the mission is success. One second left on the club, cap, zero seconds left, and it is going to be KB picking up the first round here with a stunning cap. Failure to survive. <laughs> they have to abandon him and go for he the reason. The they rubble. just left him. <laughs> oh, okay. But this was really nice. It was a nice read. Yeah, it was pretty good. Swift falling towards it Habits, not changing the play. Same rotations. Yeah, that's what got to them. Well, well, if you paid attention there, you could see Mandax. That's exactly what he did when we saw them play before. He drives onto that rubble pile, then he peeks over and resets. Well, now the issue for him was both Crooks and Xana Leon both waiting there. Yes, they dropped and, into and failure was their proxying and playing a bait the entire game. He was then just playing a bait. One of the I, I'm, I'm really surprised. How did he survive? Why Atmospheric was full HP? He went way too far back. He would die anyways. Everyone was focused just to kill whoever would come to reset. Like, this was a really good mind play, counter strat to the point. It was pretty nice. I like it. That was a quick victory on Himmelsdorf. Yeah. And KB? First <laughs> victory! <laughs> First victory on Himmelsdorf! <laughs> oh, now they're not flawless anymore. Yeah. What can you do now? But this is better for them, I would say. Happy little hellfish. We talked about it before. KB, very good team at reading enemy strategies especially if they make the same rotations. Yeah, they, they had really good plays so far. We, we all remember the HE spam on, uh, <laughs> on, on a rail, but uh, every time the problem was the closing. After that, they would get the full tank ahead and then just throw. Full tank ahead and then just throw. Well, this time, reactions were really fast. The read was good. And every play till that step-by-step step was really Tarantula good. And going back towards Tarantula was the Brilliant. right call. Yeah, it, it was really good play. I don't even know how Failware survived that. I don't know. Uh, at one moment, I thought he's dead, and then I just realized everyone from Swift well, panicked. It was and surrounded and by five guys. Yeah, everyone just panicked and just left him and tried to decap all of them together. And he was like, what? <laughs> well, I think if this goes to a tiebreaker, I'm pretty much sure who's going to be on the attacking side, uh, on the choosing the side more. Yeah, this was uh, probably the fastest game we will see today, probably. Mm, probably. Well, let's take a look at the stats, or the lack of it, pretty much, in that last round here. Failware. Failware the man. Uh, how he survived that is beyond me. I would really like to see a Mount of Shells bounce, if possible, ever. I really anytime. think he just drove back over that rubble pile. Yeah, he, he, did, he did eventually. He went on the yeah. upper court, but uh, how did he survive till how then? How did he survive? There was four clippers it around him, I think. It was a miracle, but here are the stats. 
There's not much to see in this one. It's the stats. It's not the stats that are important it's in tactics. this one. It's the yeah. And when you the see cap. the guys that are the top damage dealers, everyone below 2k. There, what what else to say? I believe some of them are not even above. Uh, Look at this. Who was on the capture circle? Do I have him in my fancy team or not? Tarantula was on capture and the 50 beast. Crooks and uh, Genghis? Genghis. Genghis. I don't have either. God. It's not good. Uh, you think they are the only ones who did damage? No, no, no. Cap give also a point. You know? Really? I think so. Oh, it's, it's so XPM based. Damn. <laughs> but there we see the lack of stats from the Swift side. Mirsky, Road, Atmospheric, Mihailov. No damage to be seen anywhere. That's a very... I, I mean, one can say that's a very rookie mistake to fall against the capture like that. It's too many tanks that were down. Like It was exactly the same rotation that we've instant, seen before. Instant they saw they those tanks. Even from the beginning, I think KB pretty much knew what Swift was going to do. They just drove straight down the 8 line. No. This is, uh, I think, first couple of play days. We've seen matches actually rush that 8 line, but they were us usually uh, using uh, tier 9 budgets for that fast uh, pressure on the cap. And it I don't think Swift expected it at 50 piece to drive on the cap. No, no, no. This was, this was new. This was new for us. Pretty nice, guys. Nice. Let's see the next one. Mm. Let's see the next one, Mojo. You're all right. Let's take a look at the lineups for the next one as he's trying to steal my job here. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, now, KB again going with Argrilla. I like it. Those E3s we saw against Utopia, they were okay, but once. And Swift, again, not changing their lineup. Uh, it's identical as they played it the last time. Now, if uh, Knekebrud already mind play them, ahem, ahem, let's see what happens now. Because if they play step by step all, all the time the same, uh, it's not going to really pay, go well for them. Well, Swift played it rather well last time with Tegrilla, though. Yes, they did. But also, let us never forget, uh, they did play the Legend in the last match. Wow, that is... That is not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this, this it's not a performance issue. Legend really has to work on their place. It does seem like our team's are ready, so let's get into it. The second round between these two KB currently up 1-0. to zero. Swift now on the attacking side, Mojo. And what do you think is going to be coming out from Swift? Swift this time. Uh, if they play anything similar, they will rotate the map four times in a row. And then they will decide where to go, because this is how they play. They just go to the hill with some guys, then they spot this, spot that. Some guys come up, some guys come down, and then in the last three minutes they attack. Okay, B, fairly common. Raven into A5 and a 1 2 line defense. Crespix in this Gorilla. I was a fan of him in the Gorilla, so it's okay. Yeah, he played it well last time compared to those FVTDs where he did 0 to 100 damage approximately. This one he did like a, about 3k, so it was nice. No Leech Bear, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I just noticed and I have him in my team. Oh. A snap. Problem. Ooh. But uh, we ha see Raven. Raven is on A5. That's the standard position we've shown uh, that you can use. Mandax. Yeah, really risky. Mandax, even more damage here. Mojo, if you remember, this is where he went down against the Wild Bunch as well. Yeah, he was sniping uh, a bit Not good. too much. I guess he's a kind of a greedy guy. Yeah, he died. Ex the, the reason why I remember it is because he died exactly there with a batshot on the hill. Now Crespix he already spotted, so they already know there are two of them on the hill. How? That was mm, Manlax there, definitely over peaking, overstaying, took way too much damage in that one. Yeah, he's now pretty much uh, in a problem because he's on two shot for all of those guys. If he meets any clipper, that side is lost. So oh, not, not Crespix though, the sneaky shot between the train wagons, a nice 800 hit that there on Genghis. Really, that was really, really nice. Really good shot. Well, it's the gorilla dose, you can make those shots with that, with that very accurate. But it's not only through the wagons, was it through the window also? Uh, n no. It was oh, just, it was, it was uh, over the, the building, yeah, yeah, it was over. into G1 nice. between the two wagons. Nice That's connection. That's a nice shot. That's, That's a nice connection. Well, basically made up for the HP. Manlax lost. I'm uh, not, because this is kind of a heavy tank and this is a budget that you need for rotation. So I would prefer to have that health on that budget than on a heavy, you know? Crooks here has to be careful as well. Questpix oh. doesn't really have a uh, draw range on him, but he can still blind shoot it. So has to be careful. Now, the play coming out though from Swift down that 8 line. It's kind of risky leaving Mirsky so. I think Mirsky will reposition though. He should reposition. Yeah, they're counting that uh, there is no rotation coming from Knekebrut. But uh, it is a risky play by him. 
Now Road will join the cap and then the jig is up pretty much for yeah. Swift. Interesting is how uh, passive Knekybrud is. They are really reluctant to do any kind of offensive spotting. Afraid to go in some trap. <laughs> it's a problem when you make traps for other people, <laughs> you are afraid of for your own shadow then. Now this is a very deep defense, you could say, from uh, Swift to defend Road on that cap. But Mirsky being that far up, has to be very careful there. If Xana, for example, sneak towards G3, G4, probably shoot him very nicely in oh, the side. By, by positioning of uh, Swift, uh, we can see that Road is just a sacrificial lamp. They don't intend to cover him that much, just to do some damage and the real rotation and strike will come if Knekebrud comes from the lower side. If they come from the upper, Grilla will fire one, Mikhailov also, and Road will try to run away if he manages. Now capture circle, keep an eye on that, down to 67 seconds here. They still have a lot of tanks in position there, Crooks, Failware, Hellfish, Raven. Now Tarantula, I think, wants to get mm, some he sneaky can, shells he into can Mirsky. Do it, uh, Mirsky. definitely, here. But it will be interesting. Mirsky needs, need, Mirsky, Mirsky needs somebody to get into his side, though, because now Tarantula won't really pen his front. It looks Skylax and Mandrax are really persistent, and uh, they're still waiting down. The push coming from Knekabrud might actually crack them, because they don't have many tanks there. Ooh, nice shell again, though, from Crest Peaks. 659 onto failure here. That Grilla paying dividends so far. And Road is running away. He just resetted the cap without taking damage. Raven is now in position to permanently reset him. So the cap pressure is off limits now, at least on that side of the map. But some, some price in blood, let's say, is paid. It's going to be very interesting to see what is going to plan be the plan here for Swift. There's a lot of KB tanks there together. They could actually maybe surprise Mirsky if they wanted to. Oh, they have decent crossfire to cover Mirsky now and he can just uh, flip between the D and E line all the time. So that's not an issue. And uh, there is gathering on 5 live now. It's a really slow game. A lot of them getting spotted here in road, smartly repositioning. Knows there's a potential for the KB, KB tanks to come around the corner, but Crooks there. Maybe over peaking a little bit. Crooks, mate, needs to go save in this one. Takes another one, so takes three, three shells, shells for his row. trouble. Shouldn't really take those shells there. It's not like you're playing a mouse. Four shells. Crespix has a oh, nice. Oh, he's gonna burn. He's gonna oh, burn. Oh, Crooks is going to go down here. No. It survives on 19 HP. That's a full 50B loss. Atmospheric picking up the Ranchla in the meantime. And Swift, Mojo, look at the HP. They're back in the game. Swift manages to recover everything by Crooks. Foul play there, and he's just lucky to be alive because of all the tank skill he has on that account. But there is a desperation push, uh, push coming out of the Knekebrud now. This is not good, though. They're driving straight into Crespix and his Grilla here. Lands another shell. That's shell number four in this round again, Mojo. Crespix and that Grilla, like, just like last week, he is making a big difference for his team. Those uh, slow TDs are definitely not meant for him. He is performing on this one, and he might, and, and he just did. And Crooks. He did end Crooks here, so it's a, bit, a little bit engagement on two sides here as Mirsky is fighting with Hellfish and at the same time have Raven and Genghis on the other side. But Genghis goes down and Raven now surrounded from two sides. Mikhailov in that 50B will make short work of him. As now Crespix picks up Hellfish, another <laughs> shot coming out from Crespix and Sanaleon, the last one standing here. Road saying it might be a close match, while well, Mojo is starting to look like one. Oh, uh, Swift. Played, uh, as we said, cautiously, slow, 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 and they did find a button to press against the Knekebrud. And again, again, a mistake by Knekebrud. After that first game, that was a great read and everything. Uh, what was Crooks doing on the middle of the street there? I mean, Crooks was Sighting. just in the five line, getting two shells, three shells, and then getting like, set on fire. Seriously, he was just standing there and trying to return a shell to people who are angling, they are in cooldown or whatever. And then he goes, other guys are waiting him. He's like a ball, just bouncing left and right and I taking damage. Swift made the, made the right rotations in this one, though, I would say. I mean, KB, their push was a little bit readable. And Swift yeah, and I had nice I control didn't, and nice I didn't spotting. see any significant damage coming out of Hellfish, who played Grille. Like, he did not counter Crespix I did all. see significant damage from Crespix, though. Yeah, well, Crespix had pretty much free, free shooting spree there. No one countered him. Like, if you had an FETD, so you might really aim there and he would be in a problem. But 
Let's check it out. Let's check it out how much Crespix managed to do in this one as he is going to be leading the scoreboard here. 3.4k damage, not bad. I mean, the scoreboard says it all. Look at this, one, two, three, four guys from Swift in the top and Crespix, when he performs on this Himmelsdorf, they are finally winning. So, good for them. You can see there, yeah, I mean, they had very nice control there. Tarantula, Philware, Raven, not really working out there. Well, Crespix gave them pretty nice advantage though. But they Man drove Mandrix. straight into him, it's like just like last week, but people drove straight into him. Again, they drive through that B line. He gets one free shell onto Genghis again, and then he manages to pick one up the I can understand driving at Bs. him, but there, I didn't see anyone actually shooting at him behind. Like, uh, what was Hellfish aiming for? Uh, also, I noticed he had the damaged gun. So that's kind of a problem for a Grilla as an, an NETD, but okay. Uh, they just left him there, and it's a tank without any kind of armor. I can understand if you can say, okay, you see an E3 there, so you're not going to bother much shooting him. It's kind of a problem if you don't play an FETD. But the Grille, anyone can pen him with HE and really return him a shell and make him problem and kill half of his crew or whatever. But no, there was no counter there. They were just driving and taking damage. This round, I want to give it over to Swift. That was well. They controlled five line. They knew exactly who was where from KB the entire time. And then they had the fire line to the back. They knew exactly how many tanks they had. And then they went to just start picking off from any every side. Road ran away. They started pushing 1-2 line. Xana was stuck there. Hellfish. It was a slow game. It was not pretty to watch. But tactically wise, it was sound. They responded to everything correct. Might be a close match, Mojo. We can move into our next map here. It is going to be Ghost Town. And we have our lineups ready. So let's take a look. You can see. Ooh, Swift. <laughs> Major, four one one threes in X fifty B two two nine bad shots. <laughs> if they had one more one one three, it'd be rage quit. Oh dear, uh, but definitely the lineup. But look at the Knekebrud also. These uh, lineups are so <laughs> one sided. Look, uh, look at this four fifty Bs. We have seen this before, and we've talked about this before as well. We've said it. If one of those fifty Bs doesn't manage to clip well, those conquerors and F E two one five Bs are going to get completely. Wiped aside by the one one threes. And honestly, I like uh, if you if you just watch a lineup by lineup. I at the moment like Neke Brothers a bit more because they are on attacking side and if they are looking for a conflict, uh, if they manage, and also Neke Brothers really likes to play offensive in attacks. And we've seen them win several rounds by just storming the enemy. And I hope Swift was doing that kind of research because they should know it by now. So this lineup is really go to just go shooting through and. Push. So it does seem like our game is ready. The score is all even. Now moving into Ghost Town. Ghost Town. The first absolutely symmetrical map made especially for seven versus seven games. The teams start the battle on opposite sides. There are numerous ways to attack here. One of the bases is located in the central square, the other one at the top of the city. The hardest battles are usually fought for the top base, and this calls for the use of heavy tanks. Sometimes the teams choose fast tanks for spotting and base capturing. So there we have another score, all even. And Mojo about this attacking side KB so far. They have the highest percentage on their attacking side, so we, we kind of expect them to be good on it. Uh, they're really decent there. But uh, in all honesty, their defense is really horrible here again. We said, like, on it's going to be about who can pick up the defense. Yes, because both of these teams have actually 0% on defense. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's see how this goes, because those 50 Bs are sticking together as well as 113s. The poor road missed the spot. He missed the spot. These 50 Bs, I, they'll have the warning of the cap. They'll know exactly how many tanks are in there. But they also did not see uh, Swift tanks. Uh, both teams <laughs> rotating I around each other pretty much here. Battle of the Blind. Uh, so the, the, all the heavies are now spotted out pretty much. The positions KB. of uh, KB are at the moment better because if 113 is pushed around the corner, those clippers will be a nightmare and they can just run away as, as they are. Will Crespix and Ventrex get caught? Yeah, Crespix is going to be the first one here. Now these 50 Bs, it doesn't look like they're about to stop here. Crespix has to be careful. Already these 50 Bs peeking around, but there's a lot of 113s here. If Swift can coordinate the fire, 
and they should be okay in this one, but they're also getting flanked right now, Mojo, from the side, but these 50 Bs might have overextended just a little bit here as Raven's out of ammo, Genghis is out of ammo as well. Now Crooks and Hellfish, the, all of the 50 Bs are on reload, Mojo, they're getting picked up one by one here. This is a huge problem because they didn't manage to focus out a single tank. This is the weakness of this setup, as it spoke. Uh, having two, three British tanks, it really helps, but two of them are already dead. Two of, these, uh, two of these British tanks are already dead in here now. Failware is going to be the next one. Like I said, these one one threes they can shoot through those British tanks as well. Raven goes down before he can reload. And we said it, these 50 Bs, they need to coordinate their fire. There's still five guys are left for Swift in this one. Now Crooks coming from behind with a full clip, but there's only so little he can do with only four shells. Oh, man, this is a big blunder. I mean, KB did a lot of damage in this game, but it was so badly coordinated. We haven't seen anyone fall in their first clip. All seven guys were alive and still pumping their damage. And there we go. It's going to be Swift picking up their first, <laughs> first defensive <laughs> round. There's, there's a lot of firsts on this match. <laughs> a lot of epic, there. epic. Now, we talked about it before. I even mentioned it. If these 50 Vs, you know, they, they spread their damage so much. <laughs> not yeah, it looked like, oh, look at this equalizer of damage. But like Swift, everyone is what dying. What they did really well is nobody was alone. Those one one threes, they were all next to each other, all peeking together. Yeah, they didn't do a mistake. Uh, many bad teams would just do a mistake and maybe leave uh, Mendrix and Crespix there alone. And other guys would push around the corner and try to get those 50 Bs from the back. And then they would fall in a crossfire from the FE heavies of uh, KB. That was probably the plan of KB all the time. That those three British heavies are shooting whoever rotates behind 50 Bs and they catch a free kill. But Swift made a good call, tactical call, to trench in with those heavy tanks and they managed to cover each other's health. So when 50 Bs ran out of the fuel, I mean the shells. The shells. Mojo, I think it's time to take a very quick look at the post-game stats. You can see here, failware, yes, British heavy, a lot of DPM, but it's a real issue if there's four players from Swift in the top seven there. Yeah, five of them is there. I mean, come on. Even the guy that was not in a start there, Mikhailov, he came really fast and started clipping them in the back. It's but just I've, not I've enough. It's just not enough. The damage here for KB is still okay, but I feel like on the second page, we're going to see the real issues here. Oh. As <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sane Leon, he's the first British who died, and that's a big and problem Hellfish for only them. Getting, we talked about it, if one of those 50 Bs doesn't perform, it can be a real issue. One of them didn't, and it was an issue. Because you could see, they needed to kill at least, at least one 113. At the very least, it'd be, it'd be good if they killed two, pretty much. Now they killed none, the 113 is pushed forwards, everybody's on reload, 50 B after 50 B goes down. It's sure, nice, you have three British heavies there, but if you have nobody to clip after, let us remember that this is the duel between 9th and 10th team in the league at the moment. Everyone from position 9 to down is, after the phase 1, uh, going to disappear from the further competition. So no matter how people can feel and say, okay, we had tougher opponents or this or that, it's still, this is how the standings are. And this is the battle for survival. So if Knekebrud uh, doesn't try to play a bit more uh, kind of coexistent, I mean, it's okay if you pull off a cheese, like on a first game, but now this is just a standard play fail they're doing now, at this moment. So if they don't manage to pull their game up, they're going to lose to Swift. There's a lot of there's a lot on the line here. Talking about line, let's take a look at the lineups. <laughs> uh, so you can see here now, Wait, is this 32 is back. Hello. In defense? They're defending with 32? That's, that's, that's a new approach. Um, A4, maybe? Oh, probably. That's the first thing I th I'm thinking of. Unless they want to sacrifice it. T57, we haven't seen it perform yet that much on Ghost Town, but honestly, I just tried it in a random other it's day, great. and it's, it's a beast a now. It's very like, bouncy. Armor. HD armor, now the armor... It's a big change, yes. Yeah. It's a big change. The angles, the angles changed a lot on the armor. The HD model changed the angles a little bit, which makes it so the 57 ricochets a lot more than before. But Swift all around setup this is the decent setup you have uh, everything yeah. here you have meat you have people who can cap and you, you have can somebody pressure. can push first you Honda yeah. yeah you can press both the caps so Knekebrod is trying to pull off some cheese again and here with this 32 while Swift is playing tactic let's see where this T32 decides to go as we move into our fourth round between these two already Swift currently two to one up and I really want to see where the T32 decides to go yeah I'm, I'm kind of really interested 
We've seen it being used before, if you remember Isna, and he, I think he picked up like three or four kills. That was amazing. Uh, Tarantula. Yeah, he was dearly ignored most of the battle, I remember that. Now this T32, probably the small gun, like we said before. For Swift, it looks like a northern approach first, but they can rotate anywhere with this lineup. For me, against this, uh, what Knackerbrook has, the logical thing would go to strike on one cap. It's kind of the best thing you can do with this lineup. Kraspix is really far away from the rest of his team. I mean, okay, it's really nice. Oh, look at how he did a break on this bush. So Sunny Leon didn't spot him, but he did spot him. Now there's two 50 Bs waiting here. It's a common start. Now we also seen if you have two 50 Bs here, that Bachat in a B9, which uh, Swift does not have, can really own them. Oh, Mursky paying Mursky the price though. of inexperience. Paying there the T10, yes, can start great, but he has to expose too much to the 50 bees, getting some free shells there. Already dropping at him a little bit, but still though. What is Tarantula doing in his T32? What is, what is interesting here and bad? Like, okay, approach of Swift, all around control of map, interesting. They really put the T32 in e E4. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah, he's a sacrificial lamb. If they push there, they're gonna sack him and shoot with the rest of the tanks. Yeah, but still, I don't know. Better than Rue, mate. Rues were not performing that great on a... Uh, I mean, it gives, <laughs> them, <laughs> it gives them a hold-down tank that can pen as well. It so gives them a tank that yeah. can survive his It's not seconds. bad, actually. He survi he'll survive for a little bit. If they push, he gives them info. He can do two to three shells with a small exactly. gun. Exactly. They will pay it back and it doesn't matter yeah. after that. But I don't like the fact that Crespis is still down. If he was behind Mursky covering him, he would do damage on those 50 bees while they were shooting at him. Also, E100 was still far behind, so Mursky was just doing his solo peeking. That was not good. Taking those two shots and when, when you are the tank who needs to go to the cap is not good. But he does have the cap now, though, so yep. at least Swift have something now. Now, Crespis being that far south, it might still work out for him if Sana decides to overexpose here. KB to win this round actually has to win engagement now, the big fight, because I think Swift at the moment has uh, upper positions and it will be interesting to see Crespix dealing together with Xenileon. Yeah, who's going to win here first in the Batshite fight? This it could change. Well, it, look, look it looks like Xana is winning it right now. Xana has three. Crespix so Crespix is just holding him off, so there will be no DK from the back position. Ooh, but Xana misses there, which gives Crespix the advantage here. Sane should only have one more, but at the same time, Skylex picks down Genghis. Genghis. This is a problem now because Nekebrud actually has no tanks to push in. They're not that fat, and that E100 can prove to be a huge problem. Great overmatch there from Swift. They saw those 50 Bs from Crooks and Raven being out of the fight and <laughs> chose to take the overmatch against Genghis there. Made short work of him, and now Crooks and Raven really can't get in on this one. Look how far Look the at this. They're just trying to up. catch Crespix now, who is really all oh. in on Xanelion, but that was so greedy. So greedy and needless. Mandax here needs to land another shell as he does on the fill where so fill will now down to 831. But he'll he should finish go him down. Off. He should go down here, but Hellfish at the same time getting pushed on by the rest of Swift as well. The T57. Yes, it can bounce more, but one more shell left. He's on out of ammo. Mikhailov picks him up. And it looks again Swift in a good situation. And here. not forget, Cap is still on. And they're winning the fight hand on hand. The cap is still on, guys, so so like Knackebrook has still to has to send someone to deal with that. Crooks has to reset here, takes the shell from Mursky, needs to land the reset. Ten seconds, he does land the reset, but it's him, Raven and Xana left, and Xana is on a one-shot. Raven only has one more shell, so that 50B is done for. It's really all in vain, because just by looking HP and number of the guns positioning, Crooks can maybe end, maybe he can end Mursky now. Mursky is behind the building. Eh, I mean. he's safe again, and Crooks has only one shell. Wow! So wow! <laughs> Raven down as well. Now Xana, Crooks, the last one left here. Crooks might be able to pick up Mursky. Mursky with a damaged ammo rack there. You can see the reload. It's insane. Crooks is flanking around. But Mursky still picks it up. Now Xana is the last one standing. And again, Swift making the right rotations. A little bit greedy at the end there, but the right rotations, the right calls. I mean, this game would be even so far easier if Crestpix just didn't suicide. Pressure from distance to shoot Oksane or hugging the red line, I would understand. But that breaking all the buildings and let's go at him, not expecting he will have any help, was kind of silly. But still, even that blunder of the move brought them advantage because while they were dealing with him and turning around, they were getting pushed on the other side. And will be rude to pick up the last kill here now. Swift 
3 2 1 up, and what they did so well in that round, we, we kind of missed it ourselves as well, is when Crespix got spotted in the south in the one on one with Sane. Those 250Bs were watching Crespix, and what they did so well is they pushed around. Yeah, there's a T32 there in Genghis Wolf. Two free pickups. It was a really good play by Swift. Uh, their reactions again on, on spot, not reacting to any Looked kind of better. cheese. No, no, this is a whole another team compared to the start of the season. Like they are on point now, dealing really well with situations, while KB shows a lot of cracks in their hull. Like really a lot of problems here. I'm not sure where Genghis is that far up, for example, because the 50 bs they can't cover him. They were trying to watch Crest picks. They were, they were so far back. It's not only that. Uh, the, their whole plan relied on that rotation from the South Baxana got stopped by Crest picks in a start. So there was no real push force to decap there. Let's take a look at the stats, though, from that last round. You can see here, it's going to be Mikhailov again. Mm. He last week, he performed really well as well. Yes, 3.3k. Really nice on that 50B. Mandrex, uh, 2.5 with AT100, that's pretty good. With only three shots. That's did, good. Did that's he Amorex someone or set someone mm, on fire? Mm, 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 mm. No, he can just roll that. I mean, divided by three. Oh, those are really ultra high rolls yeah. by him then. They, but he can roll that, I think. One, but yeah, he can roll that. Yes, but uh, look at this Tarantula doing Gengus. more damage than Genghis. Not so good this I game. I mean, Genghis just got cut out completely by the boys from Swift. That is not what they want. That T32 is doing so much more than Genghis. That's sad, actually. Yeah, I mean, that's the real issue there for them. Because everybody else from Crix, from Swift, Crespix is the least damage dealer in their team. And he still has 1.2. And there's two guys below him which have 800 combined. If he just didn't go in suicide, he would probably do more. <laughs> probably. <laughs> but okay. Now, Mojar, next map though. If any map was the map KB could come back on, it is this one. Because they're still flawless on it. Mm, I think it's Swift. Is Swift flawless on it? Yes. Wait. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> but KB Oof. has a flawless defense record there. Yeah. But Swift has a flawless record everywhere In, there. Yeah. But on other hand, they did play only the, let's say, lower part of the bracket teams on mines. So we actually do not know how will they do against uh, other teams that play more aggressive, inventive and so on. Like we saw that mines against TWP that did not look good. I mean, they won it, but it really looked bad. It should be a good map for both teams though. So it might be interesting to see both of them. Fairly high win ratio. So far, I haven't seen Swift play that ultra aggressive. And my, mines is a really aggressive map. No, they have. They have. They push three. If you remember, they pushed straight down the three and eight line. I think it was against the Wild Bunch. Yes, that, like was, three that, was, that was the game where they caught them all. But that was yeah. a counter play because they realized... Well, it was really what, aggressive. Yeah, though. it was. But uh, KB are usually the guys who like to go to the middle. Let's take a look at the lineups, though, for the next round. That's what I re that, was the, that was the best counter I've seen so far on Mines, where they just pushed straight down the eight line, completely, completely wrecked them. But you can see here, fairly common lineup from both teams. M4043 for KB, T49 for Swift. Knekebrut playing the identical almost lineup as last time. Only 113. Wait, is that it? Yes. It's pretty much uh, one more 113 except one Bachat in attack. So they want some more meat. It's uh, with this lineup, they might even preferentially play Water. Both teams Swift can play the 49. Though. Yeah, but Swift uh, did play. They did play uh, uh, the last game we were watching them. They're going middle and island with this. So it was a huge clash and the enemy ran right into them. If you remember, <laughs> it was kind of a short game. <laughs> it was a short game. Both teams could fight on the hill here. It's going to be fairly important who gets hill control on this one. I would say Swift has an advantage if they really decide to go for hill. Let's see if Swift does have the advantage as our game is ready. It's going to be mines. Mines, a small summertime map with lots of hills, rocks and other cover. The teams start the battle in the usual locations, but the base locations are different. One is located in the bottom part of the village and the other one is in the water. One of the key objectives is the centre hill. That's why the teams will often select fast vehicles and tanks with strong turrets for cover. So here we have it, Mojo, now. What do you think of the RD Tarantula? I one shot at Chokish last time, if you remember. Yeah, it was a really almost a one shot, yeah, but uh, he played well, though they lost. 
that was the issue. Like Tarantula actually played really well in that match, and uh, uh, it was kind of sad to see them lose that one. But let's see, Swift doing identical stuff as in the last game. This is copy paste from the last game they played. So Knekebrut should know it by now. Okay, failure, Crux and Xaneleon. Failure success, Crux success. Xaneleon had to break a bit. Maybe, maybe. Oh, they do it without speed. Nice. Nice. That's and another way. That's the third way then. Yeah, n not not uh, loss of HP there, like we've seen in Ding match. <laughs> That was kind of out of luck. Gang just took one for his trouble, he didn't boost, so it's okay. Doesn't matter, they have three guys at the hill and no one knows that they're there. And uh, Swift has no people on the 9 or 0 line on those boosts. They're completely in the water. I would say at the moment Knackerbrood actually has an upper hand. Yeah, that nobody on that 0 line position. I mean, it's leaving a big factor on this map open. Seriously, like look at positioning of Swift. Like, if uh, Knekebru just uh, pushes their base and one cap, what will they do about it? They are now in really bad position. They have to counterattack through this the water. This is very old school. This is very old school here from, from Swift. Even yeah. old format old school here. Yeah, mate, but old school is not always good. Because that's why it's so old. But they're they're making a base of defense here. They'll send 1-1-1-3 one, 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 to C3. They'll keep road in G4. And they'll play from there on. So they have everything spotted and they're pretty already safe. That's the control they want. They're playing a one-two line control. It's very hard to make it successfully work, but it can happen. You do the give complete hill dominance and zero line dominance uh, to the other team. The only problem I see here is because uh, Knekebrud left no one at A4. So there was no one to spot that and shoot them in the distance. So that's why they're paying the heavy price. Now look Maybe at the Crooks HP. Crooks. Like this is getting wrecked. What hit? What wrecked? Oh, the bachelors from the one-two line must have been. Must have been the bachelors from one-two line. Nice shots with Failware though, you can see, if he makes it, yes, Failware is a dedicated climber, if you remember. Okay, the Failware guys A4. pulled off a boost from A5 to A4, so they will have someone, but he's spotted at the moment, so he they has some fade. crossfire now. But they will have some crossfire, but this was a lot of damage done for Swift, and really careless play by Crooks again. Well, Mursky is without his loader, he's so unlucky, last round it was Amorak, this round it's loader. Look at Mikhailov, <laughs> where he is. He actually managed to sneak there. No, but he's spotted. He's spotted, yeah, yeah. They he's know spotted. he's there, but it's kind of a problem because he's completely alone. If they send only one guy, he can deal with him. But look at the rotation here. I mean, nobody's really spotting the southern side here. It's good work. Wonders, really. I don't understand the Raven's position and why is no one covering this side here. Like, it's finally they saw road come out. But why was no one covering that side all the time? Mursky is here Mursky pretty is much done. a bait. But Mursky he's, is he's there for. left as a bait. They literally just left him. So he would be counter-attacked where they're doing the real push here. And here comes the exchange. Here comes the exchange. Crespix already taking a little bit. It's expected to get up this hill. Gengar's dropping even lower in that TVP. Now Crooks should go down here as well. Has to be forced off this hill. Crooks gets tracked, gets held, gets blown up. Now two tanks down already. Mursky is still alive as well. Xana taking even more. And KB falling apart yet again. An easy sudden rotation catching them off guard completely. I really don't understand what is Knekerbrud thinking. They just, they're just lost on, in space on this match. We can see them get the position and they, they just don't know what to do with it while Swift is actually doing all the plays on the map. Unreal! <laughs> Unreal play here from Swift. SKB only has three tanks left. Now Hellfish taking some more, the leader. One of the last three standing fieldwork, Sana. Not much they can do in this one either. Hellfish might get another shot off as he bounces. Road also bounces, so he'll survive just a tad longer as Skylex picks up Sana. And it's all onto Hellfish and Failware. As I say that, all onto Failware. Well. Well, this is. <laughs> this, is this is a new moment for uh, Atmospheric, atmospheric. <laughs> but he has kind of a luck. Wow, <laughs> did not see this coming, did not expect this. I don't think KB saw this coming either. No, I don't think they saw they much of the map very either. caught off guard by that. They didn't expect a very... This is the part where the 1-2 line control can work, because they didn't expect it at all. They took a lot of damage, Genghis took more damage, Failware took more damage, Crooks took more damage. Yeah, but it, it is so easy to counter 1-2. 
But they didn't. They have nobody. They have nobody no, there. No, but once they they, were the they just thought that Swift was in a passive position in the base. That's fine. It. But if you take the hill and you see no one, why are the tanks immediately not going down, rotating left and right? Why did they again leave unspotted position for back rotation when they're coming out from the water from their base side? No one was even paying attention to that. There is no RT from Swift that can punish you. Why was the spot someone the not dedicated doing that? The spot on the start was a little bit late. As you look at the stats. In the meantime, it was very late. They managed to like, KB pull so many tanks off the hill that Swift could just push back on the hill and take Seriously, it. Seriously, they're just giving them the map all over the place. They, they take the middle and then, whoops, nothing here. At least Swift is making the correct rotations, though. They see tanks leaving the hill. They decide to go back on the hill and take down Crooks, who got tracked and held. And then Gengars as well, who already took a lot of damage. After and this plays, Swift is proving to be a team that will maybe even be in position to stay in the later part, as we expected before we the season started. We expected them to be there. And then after those but first so games, we it was kind about KB. Show cold shower, but yeah. KB, Brooks. match point for uh, Swift. Man, I would not see this coming after nope. those matches. No way. Like, no way. Now, at least KB and has with a... with a careless play. Look at this. 400 damage Mirsky again. was just left behind, but he stayed alive for so long as well. Like, they just left him as a victim, you know, so they could do a push unspotted. He was perma spotted all the it time. It was the correct push, though. It was well read by your Swift. Yeah, and it was badly played by KB. Well, Sweater now down 4 to one Mojo. A match point for Swift. I'm going to repeat again. Yeah, it's happening. Match point for Swift. We thought this match was going to be a lot closer. I mean, even I thought this would be a lot closer, but so far, Swift has the better reads, the better rotations. After that first game that uh, was really brilliant by KB, like really nicely played, uh, they don't show much in games where you actually have to decide what to do tactically. The calls are all late and wrong, and there are a lot of misplays by their players. On the other hand, Swift, after getting caught in that first one, playing it cool, balanced all around, not too big commitment anywhere, and they're just winning it. it j everything just works. Whatever they try, it just works. Now, at least KB has a flawless record on the defensive side. Yeah, so there is yeah. hope. There's hope. <laughs> they might win an attack. <laughs> oh, but uh, Swift has a flawless on attack on mines. So it's a flawless defense. And attack. And a flawless attack. So somebody's going to lose their 100%. Yep. It's the day of first. So. Let's take a look at the lineups we're into our possibly lost round already here. Repeat again, these teams placed 9 and 10. Identical lineup by Swift, like in previous games, but T54 we've seen that's E1. not a problem. Mm. T54 E1 for KB here. Yeah, we Probably under the hill. Ding played that, Probably but it didn't really pay out. Could this be a hill push? I'm thinking to myself, the E5 is kind of slow, E1's kind of slow. I kind of feel like they'll just put the E1 under no, the actually hill. Actually, Kusok did like 3k, not, not Kusok, uh, Koritz did like 3k damage in it. Would they go hill? I don't think so. I, I, I doubt it. I think I E1 will just be put under the hill to shoot zero line. KB? Hmm. KB? I don't think... I don't think. I don't think so. I don't think they'll be going hill. No way with this. I mean, we've seen teams go there with E5, but, Swift, but E1. Swift likes to go hill with this. Well, Swift has the perfect lineup for the hill. Uh, but it does seem like our game is ready, so let's get into it. Swift against KB. Swift currently up 4-1. to one. Now on the offensive side of mines. Mojo, what do you think? Uh, that, that E5 has so much. Uh, I'm staying in a base written all over it. That's... Uh, and the gorilla as well. Yeah. So we've seen teams go offensively there, but it's mainly guys like Ding. But then they play some unorthodox plays. Uh, and as we think, failure boosting. Dedicated booster, first part nice. Second part. Swift going for well a kill. Well done. As he we made thought. It. And taking it. And who do we have below? Hellfish. Hellfish in as his tier as 9. As I thought, that yeah. E54, E54, E1, just there really to uh, shoot the boost and as And Crooks expected. is on G4. So yeah, this is kind of a standard standard defense by KB. They're not really experimenting at the moment. And uh, Swift taking some punches here. Atmospheric already taking a few there. Kind of expected with the position Bailware has. Now, how are they going to deal with this boost? We've seen Kasna, how they dealt with it but there's no opening there because they pushed Fetso straight into the base where Raven was and then two guys from the hill. 
but it and let's not forget uh now there is raven there yeah as you said and when kazna pushed wet so there was absolutely no one on this position it was wide open oh. crest picks already spotted Ooh, will he take another one yeah he will he should hellfish has two opportunities to shoot him right here is opportunity number one which he let's didn't see, take he, connect? he should have already landed one shell there but he has a second opportunity here in the turret of crest now. picks over now there we go it wasn't him that hit it, it was Crooks. Are you sure? Yep, pretty sure. I saw Hellfish's shell hit the mountain and Crooks hit it from behind. Seriously, you think Crooks yeah. hit him from three squares behind? Yeah. <laughs> That's what the fail on Hellfish then. I'm 100% I'm <laughs> serious. Because I saw Hellfish's shell come out later. I'm gonna rewatch that. Oh, Crespix taking yeah, another failure. from Failware. Failware is there to control him. So Okay, so the boost. Not working. But yeah, I'm 100% serious that it was Crooks that hit him. Like, Felwer really has an easy time now here because there is no way that uh, Crespix can push him. And this is an interesting choice. He's already on reload. This is what Spoink didn't do it. Yeah, I, I was exactly about to say <laughs> Spoink held that one shell and, and he really so needed much. it. Actually, two shells. Two shells. Yeah, required. Spoink had three. That, that's something good to point out. You might wonder why does he reload when he has four shells? We had a match before. The player had three shells and then they pushed him later on. And those two shells he didn't have could cost him the difference here. Now, Felwer. He's going to have five shells available, so he can do one more and maybe even kill both of them if he's lucky. That's why. Yeah, he manages to combine his damage together with Grilla. But so far, it's looking good for Knackebrod. There is not really any kind of uh, gain for Swift. They're putting a Mandrex up so they can uh, compensate for the loss of HP. But and Hellfish. Hellfish taking a huge pounding by Crespix. Very well, very nice shooting there from Crespix. Hellfish. Not sure why he decided to stay there. The T54E1 does not have the armor to withstand. Not Ibacha. only that, like uh, failure already dropped down. He could have seen it. There was no spotting coming in. Like, what was he trying to do? Just balance the game? Oh, what the connection. Atmospheric here. Taking one as well. It looks like uh, you just pay, pay the price to failure when you were to drive around there. Failure is on reload again, though, so he probably fired a shell. He fired that on. Uh, on uh, it's good though, I like it. I really like his reload management so far. Whenever, whenever they will push, he will have five shells available. That's good. That's yeah, really he good. He will need it because Mendrex here is with 100% HP. If and you remember how much we criticized Spoing for it. Yeah. And uh, he will need everything to deal with Mendrex there. Very even in HP so far though. Both his team. Hellfish is at the moment like really a big, weak spot for defense of Neckerbrood. But uh, it looks like they will eventually gather up to push from the hill and base, ignoring the water. By the disposition of tanks on the Swift. They really need to kill Hellfish before... Um, as soon as they make their push, they pretty much need to make sure that the T-54E1 does not get its four shells off. If he does, it's not good. Well, they're really worried about any possible rotation from one to line, but that doesn't look like Nekebrod actually wants to do anything like it. I think they already did it one game when they were defending and it didn't work out that well. I don't think they will <laughs> do that mistake again. Five minutes left. Now KB. This is a very strong defensive position if they play it right. Very crucial is Sana. He needs to land those shells when they push in. If he doesn't, I've seen teams fall under that pressure. Nice shell there from Mandax. A nice shell there onto Mandax, my my bad, I think. Was it Crooks again? <laughs> it was Crooks it again. Was Crooks again. Oh my <laughs> god. He's really punishing them there. Yeah. Making up for that last round. And the one before? <laughs> but Hellfish here already getting pounced on by those one one threes. There's the push. They take him down. Mikhailov though getting smacked in that one one three. There's a lot of tanks there from KB in position. Ksane. We talked about how he needed to land the shell, and he did land the shell. This is really good angling by Swift so far. They have to take the risky push because this is the mines, the most defensive map in the game at the moment. And there is a push. There is a push on Failware, and he will fall soon. Failware should fall here. Crest picks. No, Mandex goes down as well, actually. Tarantula picks up Mikhailov, and Failware needs to go down here. As one more shell, Crest picks can't actually get him as Atmospheric does pick up Tarantula here with Crest picks. <laughs> and Mandax didn't actually win the fight there, Mojo. It's really unexpected. They, oh, but at, at least Crespix is alive. I would expect them both to be dead by failure. He's also on one shot, so it's Crespix. 
And at the moment, looking good for KB, because Swift at the moment he has no tanks that are really in shape to push. While uh, Ekebrut can always sacrifice some HP. Sana there in that Grilla, picking up the tier eight. Skylex now goes down to Crooks as well. And KB, it seems like they managed to hold on for at least one more round, Mojo. They're going to be staying flawless on the defensive side so far. Can see here that was the dead tank of Mandax there. Atmospheric now taking some more damage here. Oh, Mojo. That was a good defensive hold from KB. I think Sana connected the shells he had to. Yeah, it would be even easier for them if uh, Hellfish didn't make those mistakes. But it's part of the game. On the other hand, the other guys managed to hold off and Crooks really nice shots from that position. I think even crucial ones. Because uh, if he didn't hit if those he didn't shells, Felver would be dead by now and they would have probably a different if he kind didn't, of attack. If he didn't hit uh, Crespix going up there, then probably Felver would be dead right now. And that might change the game, actually, completely. What I was starting to say, guys, uh, when we finally got some steps, st stats up, we noticed that uh, this season uh, defense is really low from most of the maps. It's like uh, overall 42%, while 58 is in for attack. The mines being the <laughs> most. <laughs> which <laughs> is, But the only defensive map that still works a lot is mines, with almost 70% in defense. Almost. And the every other map is like below 50 and even below 40, a lot of them. That's quite low because tanks were usually defensive game. Now with the changes, with that uh, Waffen tier 10 not existing anymore. Ooh, nice. Crest picks. Actually picks up Phil right there, showing what he's made of. That was nice. You, they, you don't very often see people win those one-on-ones up there. That was really risky. And I don't know how Phil didn't kill him, actually. Maybe he was in reload again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he wasn't. He had, he no, had shot joking, available. But yeah, like we said, so far, mines the only real defense. Even Ruenberg has. Yes, but that's and also, did you notice nobody plays steps? Uh, steps are so much banned, like it's almost the least, every. It's the least uh, played, played like map three at the moment times because of season. those boosts, because of those new boosts. They're horrible and really hard to deal with. Almost everyone is banning them. These two teams, they never play steps, you know. They never play steps. No, 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 neither of them. Never, not a single game. So far, we've seen three games of steps. As Mirsky picks up Crooks, Genghis picks up Mirsky. And it's all on to Crespix here, enjoying the view from the mountain. Peaks over, Raven. You can do it, bro. Oh, it's, it's gonna be Xane to pick up Crespix there. Now bringing the scoreline back a little bit. 4-2 to two here. Well, KB still in the game. Still in the game. They were already 4-1 up, up, uh, up, so they might actually come back from being 1-4. to four. is not the next map. Well, they lost Kimmelsdorf so much, so it's good for them. <laughs> it is good for them now. Swift tried something there, but those one one threes coming off the hill. Easy shells for Crooks, Genghis, Xane. Well, mine's being a hard map to break. Proved its value for KB. Saved their neck, but now they have to survive a lot on other... But let's let's check out the other stuff first. We were saying about uh, mines and the other maps. Uh, why, why is uh, defense so hard now? Like, I was really thinking, and I think it's about Waffen changed to Grille. Uh, losing a lot of defensive potential for I the also team. Think, uh, and also tier 9 bad shots coming Tier 9 bad play. shots, the one one three HD model, the buffs they've got so far. Yeah, making much very more good offensive. Ag aggressive play, proving a lot of uh, rotations to be worthwhile. Let's take a look at the stats from that last round though. Yeah, the one one three tier 9 bad shot, one one three now being almost, as, I mean, you can really beat out an FV215B if you play it correctly. Yeah, that's why we see so m much less of FVs. But let's go, Mirsky, 3k damage, but not enough. One, two, three, four, five guys are there in top damage for KB. They needed that. <laughs> they really have. <laughs> and we talked about Crooks, did 2.5k, no real surprise there. Tarantula, not so much damage. Yeah, but Skylax, Mandax, Mikhailov. Yeah, they did practically nothing. There is really low amount of connections coming from uh, Swift in this game, but they were not, not in, in, in position even once to do some significant damage. Now, Mojo, moving into our next map, though, it is going to be Prokhorovka. Can they do it? Can they do it? Well, honestly, uh, at the moment, I really don't think so anymore. Because this but is the stats kind of don't look good in their favor It's either. not even about the stats. Uh, at the moment, Swift proved to be more able to rotate better than KB. And Prokho is a huge map 
relying if, on if rotations. If you remember how KB won their round against Ding on Prokhorovka? It was one failed spot from Hook. Yes. So, uh, so like passive play that KB showed so far is not going to work for them here. Not really good. Uh, Swift, on the other hand, a lot of patience, making good crossfires. Kind of surprised they are really playing better than last week. But they kind of needed to play better than the last week. Yeah, but they, both of them need to play better than last week. Mojo, the points can only go to one team unless it's a tiebreaker. <laughs> huh? Don't say it again. <laughs> tiebreaker? No. No, 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 no. Do you hear you? No more tiebreakers. We had enough. No, no, there's always more room. But now Prokhorovka, I, I, we really, I really want to, you know, this team's supposed to be a close match. I want to see KB pick up two rounds. You're, you're really in for it, mate. <laughs> you're going to be a most hated guy here. But maybe if KB shows some kind of uh, games they've given us in the past, yeah, but this today's uh, performance, no. Because all they want is a uh, gimmick on a start and a really hardcore defense on the most defensive map in the league. Let's take a look at the lineups though. we got here. Swift, still a match point. Now, three one one threes, four bad shots. That's good. And KB, very... Very standard lineup for Prokhorovka. Hmm. Well, Swift has a pretty much similar lineup they played the last time. So that's kind of... Uh, I think they have one... Yeah, they're just more offensive this time. They, d they dumped a the light tank. So Rode is not playing a light tank. He's playing uh, probably tier 9 Bachat now. While KB pretty much kicked the TVP. <laughs> yeah, we were all the time nagging about the ability on, of TVP on this map. And they finally took it out. This is a pretty def defensive lineup with i7 and e5. We've seen it works really well. And I think the TVP not doing the connections was always a problem. Does look like our game is ready. So let's get into it. Can Swift close it out? Or is KB going to come, ba come back? Let's find out as we move into Prokhorovka. Prokhorovka, one of the first maps in the game. Teams start at the regular spawn points as they do in standard battles. Bases are separated from each other by the railway, so the defending team has to choose whether to send their vehicles to the left side, playing them in the centre, or to the right of the railway, occupying the hill and a part of the village. The attacking team usually attacks the first base. However, the teams often go for face-to-face -face confrontation, seven-on-seven, seven, in the hilly terrain at the centre. That's why both teams frequently use vehicles with good gun depression angles and sturdy turrets. There we have it, our game. It's going to say about those tier 9 batch rats, I like it because everybody knows how to defend, defend that one cap now. You don't really need a roof for the two cap. So tier 9 batch rat, I like it. It's more damage and even if you leave him somewhere behind, he can actually do damage and not just be a victim that someone will pick off and move on. I mean, uh, having a light spotter is okay if you're trapping with other guys behind, but if you want to play rotations, this is much better and much more useful. Standard defense coming from Knackerwood guys leaving a heavy tank, both of them actually on this side of the rail, and doing the spot on the other, and the uh, standard opening from Swift, all going over the rail. Are you going to keep pushing there, those Skylex and Crestbeaks? Huge push there, coming in from them. Holding for now, though. Waiting. Look at Xana, though. Very high position there for that Bacha. It's going to be very crucial. He lands all his shells. Already Tarantula. Taking some there, getting blind shotted, so cr they know their angles at least, Swift. They do. But they still don't know where is Xane. Xane is pretty much safe there and uh, out of any kind of draw range for them. So he's doing huge damage and they're just guessing where he is. And there is a lot of uh, guys shooting from the rails. So Swift, well, this is identical beginning they did the last time with just a bit different. Oh, Crest picks the game getting pounded. Even getting a bounce there, so that match had very. Very lucky to get out of that one, being a two-shot. Now, but they don't think there was a single way that Swift was going to break through that defense there that no. KB had pulled up with no, Raven no, no. being that far back, all the Bachelors being that far back, Tarantula just spotting. There was no chance if they went there, unless some major, major throws happened from KB that they were going to win that. Well, there is a rotation coming in from Swift, but they're already spotted. KB should be aware of that. The only thing they cannot know, because of this amount of Clippers, did Swift leave someone behind? We've seen the games where teams do it and if a defender doesn't check him and they are already sending Tarantula to do it. So if they didn't check him, they can just shoot him in the back whilst the, there is a pressure on one cap. But there you go, Tarantula is high up and he will probably just peek over eventually and fire and see if he's spotted or not. 
we've seen this position before. It's going to be very hard for Swift. We need to make correct rotations here. But health vision at I7. We've seen it at E5 at I7. Once they get in position, capping is really not an option at all. Some of the KB tanks are really still defensive. A lot of them are out of the place at the moment. They cannot know, as we do, of course, what are the positions of Swift. So here we go. Triple they are trying to three. check out the hill first. Is there a trap behind? Now, triple 113 on this capture circle, actually. One leaving there, so very, very heavy on that capture circle. Now, if Hellfish peeks over, it could be bad, but they actually want to take the fight here. Mandax peeks over already onto Hellfish, doesn't connect the shot. Mikhailov, Atmospheric as well. We've seen this before. Taking two shells in return, only doing one on that IS-7. We've seen it, we've said it, that IS-7, very, very hard to dig out. He was brilliant, and even Hellfish played it last time here. He soaked up so much damage there. And that's one of the rare positions in this game where IS-7 actually dominates over 113 in every aspect. Now, if you look as well, you can see Mandax has a damaged Amorak. He's not going to make that peak anytime soon again, as now Raven also moves closer, and he's 1-1-3. They're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, this is a li little peck on the cheek, but Raven bouncing most of the shot. Ooh, Mirsky! What happened to you? Mirsky going down from nowhere, pretty much, all of a sudden. But three seconds left on the cap, two seconds left. They need a reset. Nice. Hellfish gets it. That caught a little bit too close there. Still, though, those one one three is 8 seconds, 7 seconds. They need another reset here. Raven needs to land it. And Doesn't. Hellfish needs to land this reset right now. It could be he all will, over. He will. Nice. He's wearing the HE shells. That's why you can see it. All, never enough HE shells for him. But Raven... Did he miss again? No, he connected onto... Oh, there you go. Atmospheric. Now, Hellfish coming from the other side as well. Still shooting HE here. Cap is all the way resetted, so that's not a problem anymore. But the HPs are still very, very even. The crucial problem is that one uh, one IS-7 that they didn't manage to kill. If they land one more shot, they'd be dead right now. And there you go. They are forced on counter-attack, but this looks good for Knackebrot at the moment. Their positions are solid. They take down Crooks instantly, though, with those two one Ignoring the Hellfish. Ignoring Smart Hellfish. Move. Well played there, but at the same time, Failware here taking a lot as well in his batch. That does, does, so does Sana. Genghis does become Mandax. Sana picks up Road. Now the HP. Still even, but look how many uh, look how many guns KB has alive. And most of the HP is on Mikhailov with the death commander that really doesn't even count on this kind of map. Knekebrut, really solid on defense. Solid on the defensive side as we expected here. Raven does go down, yes. But Hellfish is still alive in an IS-7. Still kicking, still fighting. Taking so much damage for his team. Just gonna say, both teams have 0% defense so far. On this map? Yes. So KB now has a few percent. Yeah. But next one is Swift, who needs to win a match on defense. They've never done it before. Xana here circling Mikhailov. Should be able to pick him up as he does. Crespix is on reload. It will be failure. Now bringing the score back 4-3. to three. And this is the close game we were talking about. Pretty much. Now we are back to the projection that you are calling for. <laughs> A possibility of tiebreaker. I just want to say, if it's going to be a tiebreaker, I'm going to be like, I was right. 100% right. I told you so. I knew it. I could feel it. And if a bucket of water <laughs> appears and just falls on your head, it's going to be a coincidence also. <sighs> I called it also. <laughs> now, what Swift... I mean, Swift at 113 ID was okay, could have worked, but they needed to do more damage on Hellfish, Hellfish with that initial in that peak. Hellfish in I-7 proved to be a problem again. It's a really tough nut to crack. He has really good angling there. The tank has great they armor for twice. that kind of position. They missed two shells on him. Yeah, but it's really hard to connect there. Yeah, but when they peeked over first, they missed two shells on him. It's really hard to connect, even under but that But if they angle. landed that one shell, he'd be dead. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, they didn't, so he is alive and he was resetting the most of the time even when Yeah, because Raven, Raven missed like twice in the yes. beginning. Yes, So he was keeping them in a game, as the captain should. As the captain should, Hellfish keeping them in the game while we look at the stats here. Xana Leon and Abacha, no real surprise there. Got a lot of free damage pretty much in the end and Hellfish in that IS-7 as well, 2.2. Oh, Raven popped up, pumped up a lot of damage in the T5 there. I still wonder what happened to Mirsky. I think he was in one bush trying to spot somewhere in the middle of the in the middle of the field. We didn't see it, but he probably got spotted and just annihilated when they pushed. Uh, that's that's the best guess I can have. Because I really didn't see it. No, I, he just disappeared. He's a wizard. 
it was ten blind shots probably. <laughs> but blind shot? They blind shot him? No, that's impressive. Yeah, I'm just joking. There is no way they blind, sh blind shot him. He must have been spotted and shot. But we have four guys here from Knekebrud on a top lead. It's pretty close to say damage wise. But Mirsky, Mandrax not doing practically anything in this game. The Mandrax. There wasn't Mandrax the one that had his Amorak damage? Uh, yes, he yeah. was He was the one on three with the dead Amorak. But also we have Crooks on the bottom of the list. He did well last game, but most of this match, unusually for him, not not didn't not, play not that well last that. week either. If you remember, wasn't putting out the damage he did before. Well, tough for KB, but at the moment they are really happy because they are still in a match. They still have to break now. Swift in their it's been the their season attack. of tiebreakers, hasn't it, Mojo? Yeah, we are happy about <laughs> it very much. I'm genuinely happy. I really, I am genuinely. Can you see that? I'm genuinely happy. You have a smile of a joker, mate. <laughs> Uh, just because you don't like tiebreakers, we don't. We, I can like tiebreakers. Oh, I like tiebreakers when they end the most. <laughs> but uh, back to the hand here. Nice play by KB, but nothing new. They just rinsed repeated the uh, old defensive setup. So again, we haven't seen anything spectacular on this map by them. I'm hoping maybe now. Let's take a look at the lineups and see if they do bring something spectacular. Mm, not really, but Swift there. Common they took lineup a grill again. in attack. That's kind of new for KB, and uh, Swift playing a copy-paste defense there with uh, E5 and 113. They just took Object 140 compared to some other budget. I like the gorilla actually, because if you do decide to go in the cap, at least he can punish the heavies that peek over. At yeah, least the 113. He can be really a big pain, but we've seen some grills that when they miss position because you need a certain angle to shoot them they really disappear fast in in that moment. So it's about the player. But the uh, pressure, it smells like an uh, open field. Both teams here are under a lot of pressure, though. Swift, they want to win this. KB, they want to make it a tiebreaker. Swift definitely does not want to go to tiebreaker because that's a gamble of a sort. Let's see it, though. Can Swift close this match out cleanly or is it going to go to a tiebreaker? Let's find out into our eighth round between these two and Mojo. What do you think? Can they do it? I guess Knekebrud really wants a tiebreaker because they had the fastest uh, around on Himmelsdorf and also Mainz is a tiebreaker. Ooh. So they are good to defend there if they choose it. But here we go. Woods play as we predicted. Offensive play by 1-1-3 one, one as usual. Now this I am not sure about from Swift. Yeah, we've seen several teams, if Four you remember, guys there. also Kazna tried to play something like that, but they spotted really early on and they got punished hardcore in the start of the game. But this is split all over the map. What the... Why? I mean, having not having a light tank is one thing, but this is really all over the place. Now, I don't like this position from Swift. I kind of feel like those three bachelors need to get out of the one line, unless they're trying to really, really be cheesy and, you know, the bat play a counter-attack. But, but Mirsky got spotted now, so it's kind of giving the game away. You know, you uh, can see where he's running, so... Um. Uh, why didn't <laughs> you drive away from your mates? I don't know why he decides to... Like, one, of the, one of the biggest things that you do wrong, for example, what is Mirsky just did here? Why is this so wrong, you might ask? Mirsky got spotted, there's a timer before he goes unspotted, and he drove towards B2, giving the game away Pretty much telling KB that there's more than one guy there because Mirsky would never run there if nobody else was there. Here saying in my country that is a disease you can actually contract. So uh, when you are spotted, don't run to your teammates that are not. It's kind of a problem. Now they probably guess what are the swift positions. The well, they have to. Mirsky would never run there by himself. Hey, he should have went by the buildings. He should have run faded. towards the red line, faded, came back, go into yeah. the bushes. Yeah, that would be legit and cool. This. Not so great. And there is rotation coming from Knekebrut. I don't like this A0 position with a 140. I really don't. It will actually really pay off if they try to rotate on that side. Because he will be on high ground. It depends on the rotations from Swift. If they're on time, sure. But if they're late and one bad shot pushes that 140, pretty much done for. Well, let's see. A whole lot of serious play by both of them. And a whole lot of splitting all over the map. 
so far I, I would say KB has a better positions because uh, they have a good guess where Swift is and they're sending two guys to check out this side and eventually dig out Mandrax maybe. But there is a lot of time to be spent watching the slow spots now because no one wants to suicide. And I, I, I don't like this position. I really don't. I would say we will not even see any kind of engagement in the last two minutes. Minimum. N we won't because they have to clear zero line. You do it step by step. You clear one angle, you clear the next angle, you push up, you clear, you clear, you clear, you rotate and you decide what you do. That was very close actually from atmospheric towards Genghis. Was he unspotted or that was just uh, one of the blinds? I don't think Genghis was spotted. No way that Maybe atmospheric neither. is going to spot him in the 113. Doesn't have the view range for it. Well, the whole threat from Sweet relies if they push that cap, that they will catch them off with those clippers. And uh, at the moment, Knacky Brood really needs to punish someone with that Grille, but uh, Swift is not offering any gifts here. So far, only Mihalov picked up one shot. Two, 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 two shots. And he also got um, damaged Amorak, which he repaired. So now Mikhailov has to be kind of careful in that E5. He cannot uh, ditch he cannot yep. ditch himself anymore. As I think he got hit by EG even, because he took like 230 damage. Well, Genghis is coming back to his mates. I guess they decided not to use that side of the map at all. But that kind of looks like a full play uh, th that's uh, that's kind of a gamble and really depends now on uh, um, focus how many fire. shells Swift can hit now. Yeah, it really depends on focus fire. I, I feel like Hellfish or Raven should be with their guys, pushing forward, at least one of them, to take the damage here. Um, Swift is kind of out of position for this though, with Atmospheric and Mandax being this far away. So Skylax, Crespix, Mersky, Road, they need to hit everything if, if this happens. They need to hit every single shell. If they don't, game over. I guess Tarantula will start the happy spotting. Drive around like there is no one. There we go now. Three tanks pushing up and this could work wonders for Swift Mojo. Oh boy, this focus fire here has to be perfect from either side if they want to make this work. Tarantula won't survive for very long once they get spotted. Might surprise us. And wow. Tarantula has spotted three, two, one. Not he's still alive. Wow. Not the greatest connections here coming. They're missing a lot of shells actually. That's four shells to take down Tarantula. Four shells. Actually more. No? Yes. Oh Mursky really playing it risky here. Mursky has to be careful now. They need to do the damage though, Mojo. They need to land these shells. Oh, but Genghis come Genghis on, is man. too far forward, it's already getting focused out here. And KB is not making effective use of their shells here. Swift is actually holding on. Look at the HP Mojo. Look how far ahead Swift is at this point. Crooks is low, Genghis is low. Xana taking some in that gorilla as well, taking even more in the gorilla, getting spotted out there. Oh, goes this Xana. Is he nonsense. is done. Why didn't they, if they really wanted to commit, why didn't they push in while they were wasting the shells on Tarantula? They just threw him to the lines and then they didn't use it. They didn't do anything about it. A position from Sana not ideal either. Now Crespix is going forward, picks up Genghis. Wolf. And Mandrax didn't even fire a shot and he's coming in here. Mandrax with is now HP. coming into the fight, slowly but surely. Hasn't had to do anything. Neither have Atmospheric and Mikhailov pretty much. Those 113s, Raven and Hellfish are getting pounded on from two sides. They needed the gorilla alive, which is not. And now all the bachelors from Swift are alive. I mean. Well, we can only say good game by Swift. It does look like that as now the final push is underway here. Skylex, he wants this. He wants to take down KP. Lands the shell onto Hellfish. Raven goes down. Failware is the last one standing. And there is seven guys alive from Swift. Everybody survived. Mandax joined the fight after two minutes pretty much because he had to drive all the way down. And KB really flunking this approach here. Now Failware. Poor failure left alone against the entire team of Swift. The entire <laughs> team. So Swift had to choose a first day to win the defense of Prokhorovka. And it's going to be now as they pick up the victory. 5-3 to three here, picking the full, clean three points. Congratulations. That's the second victory?